Welcome to Woo English, where you learn English through stories using clear and simple sentences. This story is specially designed to help you improve your language skills while enjoying an engaging tale. Remember, the purpose of this story is educational, and we do not encourage or glorify any harmful behavior. As you listen, feel free to leave comments and share your thoughts. If you enjoy the story, Please press the like button to reward us and motivate us to create more content for you. Your support helps us grow and continue to provide quality learning experiences. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy the story. Chapter 1 Arrival in Transylvania. My name is Jonathan Harker, and I am an English lawyer. My journey to Transylvania began in the spring of 1897. I was sent by my firm to meet a new client, Count Dracula. The journey was long and tiring, but I was excited to see a new country and meet this important client. I travelled by train through many beautiful places. The countryside was green and the mountains were tall and covered in mist. The people I met were friendly, but they often looked worried when I mentioned Count Dracula's name. One evening, I arrived at a small village near Dracula's castle. The village was quiet, and the people seemed afraid. An old woman gave me a crucifix and said, Take this for your mother's sake. She looked very serious and added, Evil things happen at Dracula's castle. I thanked her, but I did not understand why she was so worried. I thought she was just a superstitious old woman. I continued my journey and soon a carriage arrived to take me to the castle. The driver was a tall man with a cold smile. He said very little and drove quickly through the dark and winding roads. As we approached the castle, I felt a chill in the air. The castle was enormous and dark, with high towers that seemed to touch the sky. The entrance was large and made of heavy wood. The driver stopped and said, we have arrived. Welcome to Count Dracula's castle. I stepped out of the carriage and looked around. The castle was silent, and the air was thick with an unexplainable fear. The driver left quickly, leaving me alone at the entrance. I knocked on the door, and it opened slowly. A tall man with sharp features stood in the doorway. Welcome to my home, said Count Dracula. His voice was deep and calm. Please, come in. I followed him inside, feeling a chill run down my spine. The castle was dark and cold, with long hallways and high ceilings. The walls were lined with old paintings and strange objects. I felt as if the eyes in the paintings were watching me. Dracula led me to a large room with a fireplace. The fire gave the room a little warmth, but I still felt cold. You must be tired from your journey, said Dracula. Please, sit down and rest. I sat down in a large chair, and Dracula handed me a glass of wine. To your health, he said, raising his glass. To our new friendship, I replied, trying to be polite. I took a sip of the wine, but I did not enjoy it. There was something strange about the taste. Dracula sat across from me and began to ask me questions about England. He seemed very interested in my home country and the people there. His eyes were intense, and I felt as if he could see into my soul. After a while, Dracula stood up and said, You must be very tired. Let me show you to your room. He led me up a long staircase to a small bedroom. The room was simple but clean. I hope you will be comfortable here, said Dracula. If you need anything, please let me know. Thank you, I said. I appreciate your hospitality. Dracula smiled and said, Good night, Mr. Harker. He closed the door, and I was alone. I felt uneasy and could not sleep. I heard strange noises in the castle, like whispers and footsteps. I got up and walked to the window. The view was beautiful, but eerie. 
The moonlight shone on the mountains, and the mist moved like ghosts in the night. I decided to write in my journal to calm my nerves. I wrote about my journey and the strange events of the day. I hoped that writing would help me understand what was happening. As I wrote, I heard a soft knock on the door. I opened it, but no one was there. I looked down the hallway and saw nothing but shadows. I felt a cold breeze and quickly closed the door. I sat back down and tried to convince myself that it was just my imagination. But deep down, I knew that something was very wrong. I thought about the old woman's warning and the worried looks of the villagers. I began to wonder if I had made a terrible mistake by coming to this place. The next morning, I woke up early and decided to explore the castle. I hoped to find answers to my questions. As I walked through the hallways, I saw many strange and beautiful things. The castle was filled with old books, paintings, and artifacts from many different cultures. I found a large library and decided to spend some time there. The books were very old and written in many different languages. I was amazed by the collection, but I also felt a sense of dread. It was as if the books were hiding dark secrets. While I was reading, Dracula entered the room. Good morning, Mr. Harker, he said. I see you have found my library. Yes, I replied. You have a very impressive collection. Thank you, said Dracula. Knowledge is power, and I have spent many years collecting these books. Dracula sat down next to me and began to talk about his travels and his interest in history. He was very knowledgeable and spoke with passion. But as he talked, I noticed something strange about him. His eyes were too bright, and his skin was too pale. I felt as if I was talking to a ghost. I tried to focus on his words, but my mind kept wandering. I thought about the old woman's warning and the strange events of the night. I knew I had to find out the truth about Count Dracula and his castle. As the days passed, I became more and more uneasy. I felt like a prisoner in the castle. Dracula was always polite and kind, but there was something sinister about him. I began to fear for my safety and wondered if I would ever leave this place alive. One night, I decided to explore the castle again. I hoped to find something that would help me understand Dracula's secret. I walked through the dark hallways, careful not to make any noise. I found a door that was slightly open. I pushed it and entered a small room. The room was filled with strange objects and old books. I saw a large chest in the corner and decided to open it. Inside the chest, I found letters and documents written in different languages. I could not understand most of them, but I recognized some words that sent a chill down my spine. The letters spoke of dark rituals and supernatural powers. As I was reading, I heard footsteps behind me. I turned around and saw Dracula standing in the doorway. His eyes were cold, and his face was expressionless. What are you doing here, Mr. Harker? he asked in a calm but dangerous voice. I... I was just exploring, I stammered. Dracula walked towards me and said, This room is private. You should not be here. I am sorry, I said. I did not mean to intrude. Dracula's expression softened, and he said, It is late. You should go to your room and rest. I nodded and quickly left the room. As I walked back to my bedroom, I felt a sense of dread. I knew I had to find a way to escape from the castle. I could not stay here any longer. That night, I could not sleep. I lay in bed, thinking about what I had seen and heard. I knew that Count Dracula was not an ordinary man. He was hiding something dark and dangerous. I had to find a way to leave the castle and warn the world about him. The next morning, 
I decided to confront Dracula. I needed to know the truth. I found him in the library, reading a book. Count Dracula, I said, I have some questions. I need to know the truth about you and this castle. Dracula looked at me with a calm expression and said, Sit down, Mr. Harker. I will tell you what you want to know. I sat down and listened as Dracula began to speak. His words were calm and measured, but there was a coldness in his voice that sent a chill down my spine. Chapter 2 The Castle of Dracula The morning after my unsettling conversation with Count Dracula, I woke up with a sense of dread. The castle seemed even more eerie in the daylight. Determined to uncover more about this mysterious place and its sinister master, I decided to explore further while Dracula slept. I began my search by walking through the long, dark hallways. The walls were lined with ancient paintings and tapestries that seemed to watch me as I moved. I entered a large dining room. The table was set for a grand meal, but there was no food. The room was cold, and the silence was heavy. I felt as if I was not alone. I continued my exploration, finding room after room filled with strange and beautiful objects. There were old suits of armor, ornate mirrors, and dusty books. Each room told a story of a long and mysterious past. I could not help but feel that these stories were filled with dark secrets. As I walked, I found a door that was slightly ajar. I pushed it open and entered a small, dimly lit room. In the center of the room was a large wooden chest. My heart raced as I approached it. I opened the chest and found it filled with letters and documents. Some were written in languages I could not understand, but others were in English. I read the letters and felt a chill run down my spine. They spoke of dark rituals and ancient powers. They mentioned a creature that fed on the blood of the living. I realized that these letters were about Dracula. He was not just a man, he was something far more dangerous. As I was reading, I heard a noise behind me. I turned quickly and saw Dracula standing in the doorway. His eyes were cold, and his expression was unreadable. What are you doing, Mr. Harker? he asked in a calm but dangerous voice. I was just exploring, I replied, trying to hide my fear. I did not mean to intrude. Dracula stepped into the room and closed the door behind him. This room is private, he said. You should not be here. I am sorry, I said. I did not know. Dracula's expression softened slightly, but his eyes remained cold. You must be careful, he said. There are things in this castle that you do not understand. I will be careful, I promised. I will not enter this room again. Dracula nodded and said, Good. Now, let me show you something. He led me down a narrow staircase to a dark, underground room. The air was cold and damp. In the center of the room was a large coffin. I felt a wave of fear as I realized what it was. This is where I rest, Dracula said his voice calm and emotionless. During the day, I must sleep here. This is my home, and I must protect it. I looked at the coffin and felt a sense of dread. I knew that Dracula was not just a man. He was a vampire, a creature of the night that fed on the blood of the living. I had to find a way to escape this place before it was too late. Dracula looked at me and said, You must be tired. Go to your room and rest. I nodded and quickly left the underground room. As I walked back to my bedroom, my mind raced with thoughts of escape. I knew that I had to find a way to leave the castle and warn the world about Dracula. That night, I could not sleep. 
I lay in bed, thinking about what I had seen and heard. I knew that my life was in danger. I had to find a way to escape and warn others about the dark secrets of Dracula's castle. The next morning, I decided to try and find a way out of the castle. I explored every hallway and room, looking for an exit. I found many locked doors and windows that were sealed shut. It seemed that Dracula had thought of everything to keep me trapped. As I was searching, I found a small window that was not locked. It was high up on the wall, but I thought I could reach it if I climbed on the furniture. I moved a heavy chair and climbed up. I looked out the window and saw the steep cliffs and the dark forest below. It was a long way down, but it was my only chance. I decided to wait until nightfall to make my escape. I spent the day preparing and gathering my things. I knew that I had to be quick and careful. If Dracula found out about my plan, I would be in great danger. As night fell, I felt a sense of urgency. I climbed up to the window and looked out. The moonlight lit the way, but it also made the cliffs look even more dangerous. I took a deep breath and began to climb out of the window. I was halfway down the wall when I heard a noise above me. I looked up and saw Dracula looking down at me. His eyes were filled with anger. Where do you think you are going, Mr. Harker? he shouted. I did not answer. I kept climbing, my heart pounding in my chest. I knew that if I stopped, I would not make it. Dracula climbed out of the window and started to come after me. I felt a wave of fear, but I knew I had to keep going. I reached the bottom of the wall and ran into the forest. I could hear Dracula behind me, but I did not look back. I ran through the dark forest, not knowing where I was going. I could hear Dracula getting closer, and I knew I had to find a place to hide. I saw a small cave and ran inside. I hid in the darkness, trying to catch my breath. I could hear Dracula outside the cave, searching for me. I held my breath, praying that he would not find me. After what felt like hours, I heard him leave. I waited a little longer before coming out of the cave. I knew that I had to keep moving. I had to find a way to get back to England and warn everyone about Dracula. My journey was far from over, but I had taken the first step. I had escaped the castle, and now I had to survive. As I walked through the dark forest, I thought about the people I had left behind. I thought about Mina, my fiancé, and how worried she must be. I had to get back to her and tell her everything. I had to stop Dracula before it was too late. The night was long and cold, but I kept moving. I knew that I could not stop. I had to keep going no matter how tired or scared I was. I had to survive. For Mina, for myself, and for everyone who was in danger. My journey had just begun and I knew it would be a long and difficult one. But I was determined to succeed. I had to warn the world about the dark secrets of Dracula's castle. I had to make sure that no one else would fall into his trap. As the first light of dawn appeared on the horizon, I felt a glimmer of hope. I knew that I had a long way to go, but I also knew that I would not give up. I would fight, and I would survive. For now, I had escaped the castle of Dracula, but the real battle was just beginning. Chapter 3 Discovery of Dracula's Secret My escape from Dracula's castle was just the beginning of my ordeal. I wandered through the dark forest, feeling the chill of the night air. I was exhausted, but determined to survive. The fear of Dracula finding me kept me moving. After hours of walking, I stumbled upon a small village. The sun was rising, and I felt a glimmer of hope. I knocked on the door of a small house, and a kind woman opened it. She looked at me with concern and invited me inside. 
Please help me, I said, my voice weak. I need food and rest. The woman nodded and led me to a warm kitchen. She gave me bread and soup, and I ate gratefully. As I ate, I told her about my escape from Dracula's castle. Her eyes widened with fear. You are lucky to be alive, she said. Many have entered that castle and never returned. I need to get back to England, I said. I must warn people about Dracula. The woman agreed to help me. She gave me fresh clothes and a place to rest. I slept for several hours, and when I woke up, I felt stronger. The woman's husband had arranged for a carriage to take me to the nearest town. As I travelled, I thought about everything I had learned. Dracula was not just a man, he was a vampire. I needed to gather more evidence to convince people of the danger he posed. When I reached the town, I sent a telegram to my fiancée, Mina, telling her I was safe and would be coming home soon. I found an inn and rented a room. I decided to stay for a few days to recover and gather information. The innkeeper was a friendly man who knew a lot about the local legends. I asked him about Dracula, and he told me many stories. Count Dracula is a powerful and dangerous man, the innkeeper said. People say he is not human, that he has lived for centuries and feeds on the blood of the living. I listened carefully, realizing that these stories matched what I had experienced. I knew that I needed more than just stories to convince people back in England. I needed proof. One evening, as I was walking through the town, I met an old scholar named Professor Van Helsing. He was a wise and knowledgeable man who had studied many strange and mysterious things. I told him about my encounter with Dracula, and he listened with great interest. You are brave to have escaped from Dracula's castle, Van Helsing said. I have heard of him and his dark powers. We must find a way to stop him. Van Helsing agreed to help me gather evidence. Together, we researched the history of Dracula and his castle. We found old documents and books that spoke of Dracula's evil deeds and his supernatural abilities. The more we learned, the more we realized the danger he posed. We discovered that Dracula planned to move to England and spread his evil there. He had already prepared for his journey, sending boxes of his native soil to his new home. We knew we had to act quickly. Van Helsing and I travelled to England together. On the way, we discussed our plan. We needed to find Dracula's new hiding place and destroy him before he could harm anyone else. When we arrived in England, I was reunited with Mina. She was overjoyed to see me, but I could see the worry in her eyes. I told her everything that had happened, and she agreed to help us. We started our search for Dracula's hiding place. It was not easy, but we were determined. We followed the clues and tracked down the boxes of soil he had sent. We knew that he needed to sleep in his native soil to regain his strength. One night, we found one of the boxes in an old abandoned house. Van Helsing and I carefully opened it and saw Dracula lying inside. His eyes were closed and he looked peaceful, but we knew the danger he posed. This is our chance, Van Helsing whispered. We must destroy him while he sleeps. We had brought with us tools to fight a vampire, wooden stakes, garlic and holy water. We knew that these were the things that could stop him. Van Helsing handed me a wooden stake and a hammer. Be brave, Jonathan, he said. This is the only way to end his evil. With a deep breath, I raised the stake and brought it down with all my strength. The stake pierced Dracula's heart, and his eyes flew open. He let out a terrible scream, and his body began to writhe and shake. Van Helsing quickly threw holy water on Dracula, and the vampire's body started to dissolve. The air was filled with a foul smell, and I felt a sense of relief as I watched him disappear. We have done it, Van Helsing said. 
his voice filled with triumph. Dracula is no more. I felt a wave of emotions, relief, joy, and exhaustion. I knew that our fight was not over. We had to find and destroy the remaining boxes of soil to make sure that Dracula could never return. Over the next few days, we searched and destroyed the remaining boxes. It was hard work, but we were determined. We could not let Dracula's evil spread any further. As we finished our task, I felt a sense of peace. I knew that we had done the right thing. We had protected our loved ones and prevented a great evil from spreading. Mina and I returned to our home, grateful to be safe and together. The experience had changed us, but it had also made us stronger. We knew that we had faced great danger and had come out victorious. Van Helsing continued his work, always searching for other dark forces to fight. He had become a dear friend and a trusted ally. Together, we had faced a great evil and had prevailed. As I sit here now, writing this story, I feel a sense of pride. I know that we have done something important. We have protected the world from a great evil and have ensured that Dracula's dark legacy would not continue. Our journey was filled with danger and fear, but it was also filled with courage and determination. We had discovered Dracula's secret and had put an end to his reign of terror. For that, I am forever grateful. Chapter 4 Escape from the Castle The night I discovered Dracula's secret, my world turned upside down. I realized the true nature of the evil that lurked in the castle, and I knew I had to escape. I could not stay in a place filled with such darkness. The next morning, I woke up with a plan. I had to be careful and move quickly. Dracula slept during the day, giving me a small window of opportunity. I gathered my things quietly, trying not to make any noise. I decided to explore the castle one last time. I hoped to find a way out that Dracula might not have thought to secure. As I walked through the dark hallways, I felt a mixture of fear and determination. I knew that my life depended on finding an escape route. I reached a part of the castle I had not seen before. The walls were lined with old tapestries, and the air was musty. I saw a small door at the end of the hallway. My heart raced as I approached it. I turned the handle, and to my relief, it was unlocked. The door led to a narrow staircase that spiraled down into the darkness. I hesitated for a moment, then took a deep breath and started to descend. The stairs were steep and uneven, and I had to be careful not to slip. The air grew colder as I went down, and I felt a chill that went beyond the physical. At the bottom of the stairs, I found another door. I pushed it open and stepped into a large underground chamber. The room was filled with crates and barrels, and I realized that this must be where Dracula stored his supplies. I looked around for an exit, but saw none. I heard a noise behind me and turned quickly. A small figure emerged from the shadows. It was an old servant of Dracula's, a woman with kind eyes and a worried expression. You should not be here, she whispered. It is dangerous. I need to escape, I said urgently. Please help me. The woman hesitated, then nodded. Follow me, she said. I know a way out. She led me through the chamber to a hidden door behind one of the crates. The door opened into a narrow tunnel. This tunnel leads to the forest, she said. Go quickly and be careful. Thank you, I said, feeling a surge of hope. I entered the tunnel and started to run. The tunnel was dark and damp, and I had to feel my way along the walls. I could hear the faint sounds of the castle above me, and I knew I had to move fast. As I ran, I thought about Mina. 
I needed to get back to her and warn her about Dracula. The thought of her gave me strength, and I pushed myself to move faster. The tunnel seemed to go on forever, but I finally saw a faint light ahead. I reached the end of the tunnel and emerged into the forest. The fresh air was a welcome relief. I looked around and saw the tall trees and the moonlit sky. I was free, but I knew I was not safe yet. I had to keep moving. I ran through the forest, trying to put as much distance between myself and the castle as possible. After hours of running, I found a small clearing and collapsed to the ground, exhausted. I knew I had to rest, but I also knew that Dracula would be searching for me. I decided to stay hidden and move only when necessary. As I lay there, I thought about everything that had happened, the fear, the discoveries, and the escape. It all seemed like a nightmare, but I knew it was real. I had seen Dracula's true nature, and I had to make sure the world knew about him. The next day, I continued my journey through the forest. I was tired and hungry, but I kept moving. I knew that I had to reach a village or town where I could find help. I followed a small stream, hoping it would lead me to civilization. As night fell, I saw the lights of a village in the distance. I felt a wave of relief and quickened my pace. I reached the village and found a small inn. The innkeeper looked at me with surprise and concern as I stumbled in. Please help me, I said, my voice weak. I need food and rest. The innkeeper nodded and led me to a room. He brought me food and water, and I ate gratefully. As I ate, I told him about my escape from Dracula's castle. His eyes widened with fear and curiosity. You are lucky to be alive, he said. Many have tried to escape from that place and failed. I need to get back to England. I said. I must warn people about Dracula. The innkeeper agreed to help me. He arranged for a carriage to take me to the nearest town where I could catch a train. I spent the night at the inn, feeling a mixture of relief and anxiety. I knew I was closer to safety, but I also knew that Dracula would not give up easily. The next morning, I set off in the carriage. The journey was long and difficult, but I felt a sense of hope. I was getting closer to home and further from Dracula. As the carriage travelled through the countryside, I thought about Mina and how worried she must be. I reached the town and boarded a train to England. The train ride was a blur of exhaustion and fear. I kept looking over my shoulder, expecting Dracula to appear at any moment. But as the train moved further from Transylvania, I began to feel safer. When I arrived in England, I sent a telegram to Mina, telling her I was safe and would be home soon. I took a cab to our house, my heart pounding with anticipation. When I saw Mina's face, I felt a wave of relief and joy. I hugged her tightly, grateful to be home. I told Mina everything that had happened. She listened with wide eyes, her face pale with fear. But she was also strong and determined. She agreed that we had to warn people about Dracula. With Van Helsing's help, we began to gather evidence and tell our story. We knew it would be difficult to convince people, but we were determined. We could not let Dracula's evil spread any further. Our journey had been long and terrifying but we had survived. We had escaped Dracula's castle and lived to tell the tale, and now we were ready to fight and protect the world from the darkness we had discovered. Chapter 5 The Arrival of Dracula in England After my escape from Dracula's castle, I thought the worst was behind me. But soon I realized that the real battle was just beginning. I was back in England, but Dracula was not far behind. Mina and I tried to return to our normal lives, but the fear never left me. 
I knew that Dracula would come to England, and I felt a constant sense of dread. One evening, as Mina and I were sitting by the fire, we heard a knock at the door. It was Van Helsing, looking grave and concerned. Jonathan Mina, he said, I have bad news. Dracula has arrived in England. My heart sank. I had hoped we had more time. What do we do? I asked. We must find him and stop him before he can cause any harm, Van Helsing said. We need to gather our friends and prepare for a difficult fight. We contacted Dr. Seward, a close friend who had experience with strange cases, and Lord Arthur Holmwood, who had helped us before. They agreed to meet us and plan our next steps. We knew we had to act quickly. Dracula was powerful and cunning, and he would not wait long to begin his dark work. As we gathered at Dr. Seward's house, the tension was palpable. We discussed what we knew about Dracula and how to find him. Van Helsing had brought maps and documents, and we studied them carefully. We must start by locating the boxes of soil he brought with him, Van Helsing explained. He needs them to rest and regain his strength. Without them, he will be vulnerable. We split into teams and began searching for the boxes. It was a difficult and dangerous task. Dracula had hidden them well, and we had to be careful. Every moment felt like a race against time. One night, Mina and I were searching an old, abandoned house near the river. The place was dark and eerie, and I could feel Dracula's presence. As we moved through the rooms, we heard a noise. It was a low, menacing growl. Mina, stay behind me, I whispered, holding up my lantern. We entered a large, empty room and saw a figure standing in the shadows. It was Dracula. His eyes glowed red, and his fangs were bared. You are brave to come here, Jonathan, he said, his voice cold and mocking. But you cannot stop me. We will stop you, I replied, trying to keep my voice steady. We will not let you harm anyone. Dracula laughed a sound that sent chills down my spine. You are too late, he said. I am already here, and my power is growing. Suddenly, he lunged at us. I pushed Mina behind me and swung my lantern at Dracula. He moved with supernatural speed, avoiding my attack easily. Just as he was about to strike, Van Helsing and the others burst into the room. Back, creature of the night, Van Helsing shouted, holding up a crucifix. Dracula hissed and recoiled, his face twisted with rage. This is not over, he snarled. I will have my revenge. He turned into a mist and disappeared through a crack in the wall. We were left standing in the dark room, shaken but determined. We must keep searching, Van Helsing said, his voice firm. We are getting closer. Over the next few days, we found several of the boxes and destroyed them. Each victory gave us hope, but we knew that the final battle was yet to come. Dracula was growing desperate, and we had to be ready for anything. One evening, Mina and I were sitting in our study discussing our plans. Mina had been feeling unwell, and I was worried about her. She had been having strange dreams and seemed more tired each day. Mina, you need to rest, I said, holding her hand. This fight is taking a toll on you. I'm fine, Jonathan, she insisted, though her eyes were weary. We must focus on stopping Dracula. That night, Mina had another terrible dream. She woke up screaming, her face pale and covered in sweat. Jonathan, I saw him, she cried. I saw Dracula. I held her close, trying to calm her. It's just a dream, I said softly. But deep down, I knew it was more than that. 
Dracula had a connection to Mina, and it was growing stronger. The next morning, Van Helsing examined Mina. He looked grave and serious as he checked her pulse and asked her questions. Mina is in danger, he said finally. Dracula is trying to control her. We must protect her at all costs. We decided to keep Mina under close watch and to double our efforts to find and destroy Dracula. Time was running out, and we knew that the final confrontation was near. One night, we received a message from one of our informants. They had seen Dracula entering a large, abandoned mansion on the outskirts of the city. We gathered our weapons and set out immediately, determined to end this once and for all. The mansion was dark and silent when we arrived. We moved carefully through the rooms, searching for any sign of Dracula. As we entered the main hall, we saw him standing at the far end, waiting for us. This is your end, Dracula, Van Helsing declared, holding up a crucifix. Dracula laughed, a sound that echoed through the empty hall. You cannot defeat me, he said. I am eternal. With a sudden, swift movement, he attacked. The room erupted into chaos as we fought to hold him back. Dracula's strength was immense, and he moved with the speed of a predator. But we fought with all our might, determined to end his reign of terror. Van Helsing managed to corner Dracula, holding the crucifix close. Now, Jonathan! he shouted. I stepped forward with a wooden stake and hammer, my hands shaking. Dracula's eyes locked onto mine, filled with fury and fear. With a surge of determination, I drove the stake into his heart. Dracula let out a terrible scream, his body convulsing. The room filled with a blinding light, and for a moment everything was still. Then Dracula's body crumbled into dust, and the light faded. We stood in the silent hall, our hearts pounding. It was over. Dracula was gone. We returned to our homes, exhausted but victorious. Mina's health began to improve, and we felt a sense of peace. We had faced the darkness and emerged victorious. As I sit here now, writing this chapter of our story, I feel a sense of relief and pride. We had faced a great evil and won. Dracula's arrival in England had brought fear and danger but we had stood together and fought back. Our lives were forever changed, but we knew that we had done the right thing. We had protected our loved ones and our world from a great darkness, and for that we were grateful. Chapter 6 Lucy's Illness Just as we thought we had vanquished the threat of Dracula, another dark cloud loomed over us. My dear friend Lucy had fallen ill. It began with small signs, but soon her condition worsened. Lucy and Mina were close friends like sisters. They shared everything from their dreams to their fears. When Mina and I visited Lucy, we found her pale and weak. Her eyes, once bright, were now dull, and dark circles marked her face. Lucy, what's happened? Mina asked, her voice full of concern. I don't know, Lucy whispered. I feel so tired, so very tired. We called Dr. Seward immediately. He was a skilled doctor and a good friend. He examined Lucy carefully, his face growing more serious with each passing moment. She's very weak, Dr. Seward said. I'm not sure what's causing this, but we must find out quickly. Van Helsing joined us soon after. His vast knowledge of the supernatural was our best hope. He listened to Dr. Seward's report and looked closely at Lucy. Tell me, Lucy, Van Helsing asked gently, do you remember anything strange happening to you recently? Lucy thought for a moment, then nodded slowly. I've had terrible dreams, she said. In my dreams a dark figure comes to me at night. I feel cold, and when I wake up, I'm even more tired. Van Helsing's eyes narrowed. He turned to us, 
his voice grave. We must act quickly. This is no ordinary illness. Lucy is under attack by a vampire. Mina gasped, and I felt a chill run down my spine. We thought we had destroyed Dracula, but his evil influence still lingered. We must protect Lucy, Van Helsing continued. She is in great danger. That night we took turns watching over Lucy. We placed garlic around her room and kept a crucifix near her bed. Van Helsing instructed us to stay vigilant and not let our guard down. As the night wore on, Lucy seemed to improve slightly, but her recovery was slow and we knew we had to do more. Van Helsing decided to give her a blood transfusion to strengthen her. We need a donor, Van Helsing said. Someone who is strong and healthy. I'll do it, I volunteered immediately. I want to help Lucy. The transfusion took place, and slowly colour returned to Lucy's cheeks. She looked better, but Van Helsing warned us that the danger was not over. Jonathan, you have given her strength, he said but we must find the source of this evil and destroy it completely. Over the next few days, Lucy's condition fluctuated. Some days she was better and others she was worse. We continued our vigilance, hoping to keep her safe. One night, while we were watching over Lucy, I noticed something strange. A bat was hovering outside her window its eyes glowing in the dark. I alerted Van Helsing, and he quickly closed the window and drew the curtains. That is no ordinary bat, Van Helsing said. It is a servant of the vampire. We must be even more careful. Despite our efforts, Lucy's condition worsened again. She became pale and weak, her breaths shallow. We were running out of time. We need to find the vampire's lair, Van Helsing said urgently. That is the only way to save Lucy. We searched tirelessly, following every clue and lead. Finally, we discovered an old, abandoned crypt in a nearby cemetery. It was a place filled with darkness and decay. We knew we had found the source of the evil. We must go in and destroy whatever lies within, Van Helsing said. Lucy's life depends on it. Armed with stakes, garlic, and holy water, we entered the crypt. The air was cold and foul, and our footsteps echoed in the darkness. As we moved deeper into the crypt, we found a coffin in the centre of the room. Van Helsing signalled for us to stop. Be ready, he said. This will not be easy. With trembling hands I opened the coffin, Inside we saw a figure that looked like Lucy, but it was twisted and monstrous. Her eyes were closed, but I could see the fangs protruding from her mouth. We must act now, Van Helsing said. Jonathan, drive the stake through her heart. My heart pounded as I took the stake and hammer. I hesitated, looking at the face of my dear friend, but I knew what I had to do. With a deep breath, I drove the stake into her heart. The creature let out a terrible scream, and its body convulsed. Van Helsing quickly poured holy water over it, and the figure began to dissolve into dust. The air cleared, and a sense of peace filled the crypt. It is done, Van Helsing said softly. Lucy is free. We left the crypt, our hearts heavy but relieved. We had lost Lucy, but we had saved her from a fate worse than death. We returned to Dr. Seward's house, where Mina was waiting anxiously. Lucy is at peace, I told her, holding her close. She is free from the vampire's curse. Mina wept, and I felt tears in my own eyes. We had faced a great evil and emerged victorious but the cost had been high. We knew that our battle was not over. Dracula's influence still lingered, and we had to remain vigilant. In the days that followed, 
we worked to strengthen our defences and protect those we loved. We knew that Dracula was still out there, waiting for his chance to strike again. But we were ready. We had faced darkness and had come through stronger. Together, we would continue the fight, determined to protect our world from the evil that lurked in the shadows. Chapter 7 The Hunt Begins With Lucy at peace, we turned our attention to the pressing matter of finding and destroying Dracula. We knew he was still out there, and we couldn't rest until he was stopped. Van Helsing gathered us together in Dr. Seward's study to plan our next steps. We have weakened Dracula by destroying some of his resting places, Van Helsing said, but he is still dangerous. We must find his remaining lairs and destroy them. We agreed to split up and search different areas of the city. Mina, though worried about my safety, understood the importance of our mission. She insisted on helping, and we all knew that her strength and intelligence were invaluable. Our first stop was Carfax Abbey, an old, abandoned estate that Dracula had recently purchased. The place was dark and eerie, surrounded by overgrown trees and tall grass. As we approached the abbey, a sense of foreboding washed over us. Stay close, Van Helsing whispered, holding up his crucifix. We don't know what we'll find inside. We entered the abbey, our footsteps echoing in the vast empty space. The air was cold, and the smell of decay filled our nostrils. We moved cautiously, searching for any signs of Dracula's presence. Suddenly, Dr. Seward called out, pointing to a large wooden crate in the corner. This must be one of his boxes of soil, Dr. Seward said. We need to destroy it. Van Helsing nodded and handed me a hammer and stake. Jonathan, you know what to do. I took the hammer and stake, feeling a mixture of fear and determination. With a deep breath, I drove the stake into the crate, breaking it apart. Inside, we found the dark soil that Dracula needed to rest. We poured holy water over it, and the soil sizzled and smoked. That's one more down, Van Helsing said, but we have more to find. We continued our search, moving from one location to another. Each time we found one of Dracula's boxes, we destroyed it. The work was hard and dangerous, but we were driven by our mission. We knew that each box we destroyed weakened Dracula further. One night, while searching a deserted warehouse, we encountered a group of Dracula's minions. They were pale and gaunt, their eyes filled with a sinister hunger. They attacked us, but we were prepared. Van Helsing and Dr. Seward fought them off with crucifixes and garlic, while I used my hammer and stake. The fight was intense, but we managed to defeat them. As we stood over the bodies of the fallen minions, I realized just how far Dracula's influence had spread. We were not just fighting one vampire. We were fighting an entire network of evil. We must remain vigilant, Van Helsing said, his voice grim. Dracula's power is great, but we are stronger together. As we left the warehouse, I felt a sense of exhaustion, the constant danger and fear were taking their toll, but I knew we couldn't stop. Dracula was still out there, and we had to find him before he could strike again. One evening, while we were resting at Dr. Seward's house, Mina approached us with a new piece of information. She had been studying old maps and documents, and she believed she had found a clue to Dracula's final hiding place. There is an old chapel on the outskirts of the city, Mina said. It matches the description of one of the locations mentioned in the documents. Van Helsing examined the map and nodded. This could be it. We must go there immediately. We gathered our weapons and set out for the chapel.
The night was dark and cold, and a sense of urgency filled the air. As we approached the chapel, we saw that it was in ruins, its walls crumbling and overgrown with ivy. We must be careful, Van Helsing warned. This could be a trap. We entered the chapel, moving silently through the shadows. The inside was dark and damp, and the smell of decay was overwhelming. We searched every corner, looking for any signs of Dracula. Suddenly, we heard a noise from behind the altar. We approached cautiously and found a hidden door. Van Helsing opened it, revealing a narrow staircase leading down into the darkness. This must be it, he said. Prepare yourselves. We descended the staircase, our hearts pounding. At the bottom, we found a large underground chamber. In the centre of the room was a coffin, and we knew immediately that we had found Dracula's final resting place. This is it, Van Helsing said. Jonathan, you must do it. You must end this once and for all. I approached the coffin, my hands shaking. I knew this was the moment we had been fighting for. With a deep breath, I lifted the lid of the coffin and saw Dracula lying inside, his eyes closed. Summoning all my courage, I raised the stake and brought it down with all my strength. The stake pierced Dracula's heart and his eyes flew open. He let out a terrible scream and his body began to convulse. Van Helsing quickly poured holy water over Dracula and his body started to dissolve into dust. The chamber filled with a blinding light and then all was silent. It is done, Van Helsing said softly. Dracula is no more. We stood in the chamber, our hearts filled with relief and triumph. We had finally defeated the great evil that had haunted us for so long. We had faced darkness and emerged victorious. As we left the chapel, I felt a sense of peace. The hunt was over, and we could finally return to our lives. Mina and I embraced, grateful to be safe and together. We had faced incredible danger, but our love and determination had seen us through. In the days that followed, we worked to rebuild our lives. We knew that the memory of Dracula would stay with us forever, but we were stronger for having faced him. We had fought bravely, and we had won. Chapter 8 Mina in Danger Our victory over Dracula brought a brief sense of peace, but it was soon shattered. Mina began to show signs of distress, and it became clear that she was in grave danger. We had destroyed Dracula, but his dark influence lingered. One night, Mina woke up screaming, her eyes wide with fear. Jonathan, help me! she cried, clutching at her throat. I held her close, trying to calm her. It's all right, Mina, I whispered. I'm here. Van Helsing examined her the next morning. He looked very serious, his face lined with worry. Mina is under Dracula's influence, he said. Even in death, his power reaches out to her. I felt a cold fear grip my heart. What can we do? I asked desperately. How can we save her? We must act quickly, Van Helsing said. We must break Dracula's hold on her before it's too late. Van Helsing decided to use hypnosis to reach Mina's mind and find out more about Dracula's influence. We gathered in Dr. Seward's study, and Van Helsing began his work. He spoke softly to Mina, guiding her into a deep, trance-like state. Mina, can you hear me? Van Helsing asked gently. Yes, Mina replied, her voice distant and soft. Tell me what you see, Van Helsing said. I see darkness, Mina said. I see him, Dracula. He is calling to me. He wants me to come to him. Van Helsing's eyes narrowed. We will not let that happen, Mina. We will protect you. He brought her out of the trance and looked at us. 
We must find a way to sever this connection, he said. We must make sure Dracula can never reach her again. We decided to use every protection we knew. We placed garlic around Mina's room and kept a crucifix near her at all times. Van Helsing also prepared a mixture of holy water and herbs for Mina to drink. This will help to cleanse her, he said, but we must remain vigilant. Despite our efforts, Mina's condition worsened. She became pale and weak, her energy draining away. I stayed by her side, my heart breaking as I watched her suffer. One evening, as I sat by Mina's bed, I heard a noise outside the window. I looked out and saw a shadowy figure standing in the garden. It was Dracula. Even in death, his presence was strong. Stay away, I shouted. But the figure did not move. Van Helsing rushed into the room, his face grim. He is trying to reach her, he said. We must stop him. We decided to confront Dracula's spirit directly. We gathered our courage and went into the garden, armed with crucifixes and holy water. The air was cold and filled with a sense of foreboding. Show yourself, Van Helsing commanded, holding up his crucifix. The shadowy figure appeared, more solid now. It was Dracula, his eyes burning with hatred. You cannot stop me, he hissed. Mina belongs to me. She belongs to no one but herself, I shouted back, my anger giving me strength. Van Helsing began to chant in Latin, holding the crucifix high. Dracula recoiled, his form flickering like a flame in the wind. We threw holy water at him, and he screamed, his body dissolving into mist. This is not over, he snarled as he disappeared. I will return. We returned to Mina's room, our hearts heavy but determined. We must find a way to break this curse completely, Van Helsing said. We cannot let him take her. In the days that followed, we searched for a solution. Van Helsing studied ancient texts and rituals, looking for a way to protect Mina. He discovered an old ritual that might sever Dracula's hold on her. This ritual is dangerous, Van Helsing warned, but it is our best hope. We prepared everything for the ritual. We gathered in a circle around Mina's bed, holding hands and chanting the ancient words. The air grew cold, and a dark presence filled the room. Mina, you must be strong, Van Helsing said. You must fight him. Mina's eyes fluttered open, and she looked at us with a mixture of fear and determination. I will, she said weakly. We continued the ritual, our voices growing louder. The dark presence intensified, and I felt a cold hand on my shoulder. I turned and saw Dracula's spirit, his eyes filled with malice. You cannot have her, I shouted, holding up my crucifix. Dracula screamed and recoiled, his form flickering. Van Helsing threw holy water at him, and he writhed in pain. This is the end, Van Helsing said. You have no power here. With a final terrible scream, Dracula's spirit dissolved into nothingness. The room grew still, and the dark presence vanished. Mina's breathing steadied, and her color began to return. We did it, Van Helsing said his voice filled with relief. The curse is broken. I hugged Mina, tears of joy streaming down my face. You're safe now, I whispered. We've saved you. In the days that followed, Mina's strength returned. She became her old self again, full of life and energy. We knew that the battle was finally over. Dracula's influence was gone, and we were free. We continued our lives, grateful for each day. The memory of Dracula's terror stayed with us, but it no longer held power over us. We had faced the darkness and emerged victorious. Our love and determination had seen us through, and we knew that nothing could ever break us.
Chapter 9 Gathering Evidence After breaking Dracula's curse on Mina, our lives slowly returned to normal. However, we knew that our work was not done. We needed to gather evidence to prove Dracula's existence and the threat he posed. This was crucial to prevent anyone else from falling victim to his dark influence. Van Helsing, Mina, Dr. Seward and I met regularly to discuss our progress. We decided to document everything we had experienced and discovered. This would be our most important weapon in convincing others of the reality of Dracula and his evil. We started by organizing our notes, letters and diaries. Each piece of evidence was vital. We created a timeline of events, from my first journey to Transylvania to our final battle in the chapel. Van Helsing guided us, his vast knowledge and experience invaluable in this task. Every detail is important, Van Helsing said. We must be thorough and precise. Mina, who had recovered her strength, took on the task of transcribing our notes into a cohesive narrative. Her skills as a writer were exceptional, and she worked tirelessly to ensure our story was clear and compelling. As Mina wrote, Van Helsing and I continued to search for additional evidence. We revisited the places where we had encountered Dracula, looking for anything we might have missed. We spoke to people who had been affected by his presence, gathering their testimonies. One evening, we visited the local library to research historical records. We hoped to find information about Dracula's origins and his previous activities. The librarian, a kind elderly woman, helped us search through old books and documents. Dracula has a long history, Van Helsing explained. He has caused suffering for centuries. We must uncover his past to understand his power. We found references to a nobleman named Vlad Tapes, also known as Vlad the Impaler. The stories of his cruelty and thirst for blood were shocking. It became clear that Dracula was this same man, using his dark powers to extend his life and continue his reign of terror. Vlad Tepes was a monster in life, Van Helsing said. In death he became even more dangerous. With this new information, we felt more confident in our ability to make our case. We included these historical accounts in our narrative, drawing connections between Vlad Tepes and Dracula. The evidence was compelling, but we knew we needed more. We decided to consult with experts in folklore and the supernatural. Van Helsing reached out to his colleagues around the world, asking for their insights and support. Their responses were varied but helpful. Some provided additional stories and legends about vampires, while others offered scientific explanations for Dracula's abilities. One particularly useful contact was a professor from Vienna who had studied the folklore of Eastern Europe extensively. He sent us detailed notes on vampire legends, including methods of protection and destruction. These legends have a basis in truth, Van Helsing said. We must use this knowledge to strengthen our case. As we compiled our evidence, we also prepared to present it to the authorities. We knew that convincing them would be difficult. The idea of a vampire in modern society was hard to accept. However, we were determined to try. We arranged a meeting with a respected police inspector. He listened patiently as we presented our evidence, his expression growing more serious as we spoke. We showed him our documents, historical records and testimonies. Mina's narrative was particularly powerful detailing her own experiences and the danger she had faced. The inspector was sceptical at first, but as he reviewed our evidence, his attitude changed. This is extraordinary, he said. If what you say is true, it's a threat we cannot ignore. We are not asking you to believe us blindly, Van Helsing said. We ask only that you investigate further, 
the inspector agreed to look into our claims. He promised to keep an open mind and take our evidence seriously. This was a significant step forward, but we knew our work was not done. We continued to gather and organize our evidence, preparing to present it to other authorities and scholars. We wanted to ensure that Dracula's threat was recognized and addressed. Our goal was to create a comprehensive and convincing case that would leave no doubt about the reality of our experiences. As we worked, we also remained vigilant. We knew that other threats could still exist. The battle with Dracula had shown us that the world was full of dangers we had never imagined. We needed to be prepared for whatever might come next. One day, while organizing our notes, Mina found a letter from a woman in a nearby village. The letter described strange occurrences similar to what we had experienced. We decided to visit the village and investigate further. The woman, Mrs. Hawkins, welcomed us into her home. She told us about the recent arrival of a mysterious man who had brought fear and illness to the village. Her story mirrored our own encounters with Dracula. This man fits the description of a vampire, Van Helsing said. We must act quickly. We investigated the village, speaking to other residents and gathering their testimonies. We found more evidence of the vampire's presence, including reports of strange bites and unexplained illnesses. It became clear that Dracula's influence was still present. With this new evidence, we returned to the authorities. We presented our findings, emphasizing the urgency of the situation. The police inspector, now more convinced of our claims, agreed to take immediate action. The authorities organized a search of the village and the surrounding area. With our guidance, they found the vampire's hiding place and destroyed it. This victory reinforced the importance of our work and the need to remain vigilant. As we continued to gather evidence and share our story, we received support from unexpected places. Scholars, officials, and ordinary people began to take notice of our efforts. Our message spread, raising awareness about the dangers of the supernatural and the importance of vigilance. We knew that our journey was far from over. The battle against darkness would continue, but we were ready. We had faced incredible challenges and emerged stronger. Our determination and unity had seen us through, and we would continue to fight for a safer world. As I write this, I feel a deep sense of purpose. Our work is making a difference, and we are not alone. Together, we will continue to protect our world from the shadows. We will gather evidence, share our knowledge, and stand strong against any threat. The fight is not over, but we are ready for whatever comes next. Chapter 10. Confrontations with Dracula We had gathered significant evidence about Dracula, but our mission was far from over. Despite our victories, the presence of darkness still loomed. We knew that Dracula, or perhaps another vampire like him, could still threaten our world. Our resolve hardened. We had to confront this evil head-on. One evening, Van Helsing called a meeting at Dr. Seward's house. His face was grave, and I could sense the urgency in his voice. My friends, he began, we have discovered that Dracula is not completely destroyed. His spirit lingers, and we must confront him once more to end this nightmare. Mina looked at me with fear in her eyes. Jonathan, are we strong enough to face him again? I took her hand and squeezed it gently. We have to be, Mina. We cannot allow this darkness to continue. Van Helsing laid out our plan. We must find Dracula's final hiding place. This time, we will ensure that he cannot return. We will confront him and end his reign of terror once and for all. 
Our search led us to an old abandoned manor on the outskirts of London. It was a cold, foggy night when we arrived. The manor was shrouded in mist, its tall windows dark and menacing. The air was heavy with the scent of decay. We must be careful, Van Helsing warned. Dracula is at his most dangerous when he's cornered. We entered the manor, our footsteps echoing in the vast, empty hallways. The walls were lined with faded portraits and cobweb-covered furniture. Every creak and groan of the old house made our hearts race. As we searched the rooms, we found more evidence of Dracula's presence. Strange symbols were etched into the walls, and the air grew colder the deeper we went. Finally, we came upon a large, locked door at the end of a long corridor. This must be it, Van Helsing said. He took a deep breath and forced the door open. Inside, we found a large, dimly lit chamber. In the centre of the room was a coffin, its lid slightly ajar. Dracula lay inside, his eyes closed, his skin pale as death. This is our chance, Van Helsing whispered. We must act quickly. Dr. Seward and I moved forward with stakes and hammers. Just as we were about to strike, Dracula's eyes snapped open. He leapt from the coffin with incredible speed, his face twisted with fury. You dare to confront me again, he hissed, his voice echoing through the chamber. We will not allow you to harm anyone else, Van Helsing replied, holding up a crucifix. Dracula recoiled from the crucifix, his eyes burning with hatred. You think you can stop me? I am eternal. A fierce battle ensued. Dracula moved with supernatural speed, dodging our attacks and striking back with terrifying strength. We fought with all our might, determined to end his reign of terror. Van Helsing thrust his crucifix forward, forcing Dracula into a corner. Now, Jonathan! he shouted. I stepped forward, raising my stake and hammer. My hands trembled, but I knew I had to do this. With a surge of strength, I drove the stake into Dracula's heart. He let out a terrible scream, his body convulsing. Dr. Seward quickly poured holy water over Dracula, and his body began to dissolve into dust. The air filled with a foul smell, and the chamber grew still. It is done, Van Helsing said, his voice filled with relief. Dracula is finally destroyed. We stood in the chamber, our hearts pounding. We had faced the darkness and emerged victorious. The weight of our victory was immense, and we felt a deep sense of relief and triumph. As we left the manor, the first light of dawn began to break through the fog. The air was fresh and clean, and we felt a sense of peace we had not known in a long time. Back at Dr. Seward's house, we gathered in the study to reflect on our journey. Mina looked at me with tears in her eyes. Jonathan, it's over. We're safe now. I held her close, feeling the warmth of her embrace. Yes, Mina, we've done it. We've protected our world from this great evil. Van Helsing stood by the window, looking out at the rising sun. We have faced incredible challenges and fought bravely. Our victory is a testament to our strength and unity. We knew that our battle had been hard fought, but it had brought us closer together. We had faced our fears and conquered them. Our love and determination had seen us through. In the days that followed, we continued to share our story and our evidence. The authorities took our findings seriously, and measures were put in place to ensure that no other threats like Dracula could arise. Our work had made a difference, and we were proud of what we had accomplished. As I write this, I feel a deep sense of gratitude and fulfillment. We have faced the darkness and emerged stronger. Our lives have been forever changed, but we are ready to face whatever comes next. We will continue to protect our world from the shadows, 
and we will never forget the strength and courage that brought us through. The memory of Dracula's terror will always be with us, but it no longer holds power over us. We have seen the depths of fear and emerged victorious. Our journey has been long and difficult, but it has made us who we are. Chapter 11 Journey Back to Transylvania Our victory over Dracula in London brought us peace, but we knew our mission was not yet complete. Van Helsing believed that to ensure Dracula's destruction, we needed to return to where it all began, Transylvania. There, we would make certain that every trace of his power was eradicated. It was a difficult decision, but we understood its necessity. We prepared for the journey with a mixture of determination and apprehension. Mina, Van Helsing, Dr. Seward and I gathered our belongings and made plans for our travel. Mina, though still recovering from her ordeal, insisted on coming with us. Her strength and courage were inspiring. Our journey began with a long train ride across Europe. As we travelled, we revisited the events that had led us to this point. The train moved steadily through the countryside, the rhythmic sound of the wheels, a constant companion to our thoughts. Mina and I sat together, holding hands, drawing comfort from each other's presence. Jonathan, do you think we will finally be free of Dracula's shadow? Mina asked, her voice soft but steady. I believe we will, Mina, I replied. We have come this far, and we will see it through to the end. Van Helsing joined us, his face serious but calm. We must remain vigilant, he said. Dracula's power is great, but we have proven our strength. Together, we will succeed. We reached the border of Transylvania as the sun was setting. The landscape was rugged and wild, the mountains rising majestically against the darkening sky. The sight of these familiar peaks filled me with a mix of dread and resolve. This was Dracula's territory, but it would soon be the place of his final defeat. Our journey continued by carriage, travelling through dense forests and narrow mountain passes. The air grew colder, and a sense of foreboding settled over us. We stopped at a small village to gather supplies and rest. The villagers, though wary, were kind, and helped us prepare for the final leg of our journey. As we approached Dracula's castle, the memories of my first visit came flooding back. The towering structure loomed ahead, dark and foreboding. It looked exactly as I remembered, cold, unwelcoming, a fortress of evil. We set up camp a short distance from the castle. Van Helsing laid out our plan with meticulous detail. We will enter the castle at dawn, he said. Dracula's power is weakest during the daylight hours. We must find and destroy any remaining traces of his influence. The night was long and restless. We took turns keeping watch, each of us lost in our thoughts and fears. Mina sat beside me, her hand in mine, her presence a source of strength and comfort. Jonathan, whatever happens, I am glad we are together, she said softly. Me too, Mina, I replied. We will face this together and emerge stronger. At first light we approached the castle. The heavy wooden doors creaked open and we stepped inside. The air was cold and still, and the shadows seemed to move around us. We moved cautiously through the hallways, searching for any sign of Dracula's presence. In the great hall we found a series of doors leading to underground chambers. Van Helsing led the way, his lantern casting a faint glow in the darkness. We descended a narrow staircase, the air growing colder with each step. At the bottom, we entered a large crypt. The walls were lined with coffins, each one marked with strange symbols. Van Helsing examined them closely. 
his expression grim. These coffins are the source of Dracula's power, he said. We must destroy them all. We worked quickly, using stakes and holy water to cleanse the crypt. The coffins burst into flames and disintegrated into dust. The air grew lighter, and a sense of relief washed over us. We are not done yet, Van Helsing warned. We must find Dracula's final resting place. We continued our search, moving deeper into the castle's labyrinthine passages. Finally, we came upon a hidden chamber. Inside we found a large, ornate coffin, its lid engraved with ancient symbols. This was Dracula's true resting place. This is it, Van Helsing said. We must end this now. With a sense of finality, we approached the coffin. I felt a mixture of fear and determination as I lifted the lid. Inside, Dracula lay motionless, his eyes closed, his body pale and lifeless. Jonathan, you must do it, Van Helsing said. Drive the stake through his heart. I took a deep breath and raised the stake. With all my strength, I drove it into Dracula's heart. His eyes snapped open and he let out a terrible scream. His body convulsed and a dark mist filled the chamber. Van Helsing quickly poured holy water over Dracula and the mist dissipated. Dracula's body began to dissolve into dust and the air grew clear. It is over, Van Helsing said, his voice filled with relief. Dracula is finally destroyed. We stood in the chamber, our hearts pounding. We had faced the ultimate evil and emerged victorious. The weight of our victory was immense, and we felt a deep sense of relief and triumph. We left the castle, the first light of dawn breaking over the mountains. The air was fresh and clean, and we felt a sense of peace we had not known in a long time. As we descended the mountain, we knew that Dracula's reign of terror was over. Back in the village, we received a warm welcome. The villagers, once fearful and suspicious, now looked at us with gratitude and respect. We shared our story with them, and they listened with awe and relief. Our journey back to England was filled with a sense of accomplishment. We had faced incredible challenges and fought bravely. Our victory was a testament to our strength and unity. As I write this, I feel a deep sense of gratitude and fulfillment. We have faced the darkness and emerged stronger. Our lives have been forever changed, but we are ready to face whatever comes next. We will continue to protect our world from the shadows, and we will never forget the strength and courage that brought us through. The memory of Dracula's terror will always be with us, but it no longer holds power over us. We have seen the depths of fear and emerged victorious. Our journey has been long and difficult, but it has made us who we are. We are stronger together, and we will face the future with hope and determination. The darkness has been defeated, and the light of a new day shines brightly upon us. Our story is one of triumph and courage, and it will inspire others to stand strong against the forces of evil. Chapter 12 The Final Chase After destroying Dracula's final resting place, we felt a profound sense of relief. However, Van Helsing warned us that our mission was not yet complete. We had eradicated his presence in Transylvania, but we needed to ensure that no remnants of his evil lingered. Our final task was to hunt down any remaining followers and secure our victory. We left the village at dawn, our spirits high but our determination unwavering. Van Helsing led the way, guiding us through the dense forests and rugged terrain. Our destination was a remote part of the Carpathian Mountains, where Dracula's minions were rumoured to be hiding. As we journeyed deeper into the mountains, the landscape grew wilder and more forbidding. The trees closed in around us, 
and the path became steep and treacherous. Yet our resolve never wavered. We knew that the final confrontation was near. On the third day of our journey, we set up camp by a fast-flowing river. The sound of the water was soothing, but we remained on high alert. Van Helsing had noticed signs that we were being followed. Tracks in the mud and broken branches told us that Dracula's minions were close. We must be ready, Van Helsing said as we gathered around the campfire. They will not give up easily. They are desperate and dangerous. That night, we took turns keeping watch. The air was cold, and the darkness seemed to press in on us. I sat by the fire, my senses heightened, listening for any sound that might indicate an attack. Mina stayed close, her presence a source of comfort and strength. In the early hours of the morning, just as the first light of dawn began to touch the sky, we heard a rustling in the trees. Van Helsing was instantly alert, his eyes scanning the darkness. They are here, he whispered. Prepare yourselves. We moved quickly and quietly, gathering our weapons and forming a defensive circle. The rustling grew louder, and suddenly dark figures emerged from the shadows. They were pale and gaunt, their eyes glowing with an unnatural light. Dracula's minions attacked with ferocity, but we were ready. Van Helsing wielded his crucifix, forcing them back with its holy power. Dr. Seward and I fought with stakes and knives, each of us determined to protect our friends and end this threat once and for all. The battle was intense. The minions moved with supernatural speed, their attacks swift and deadly. But we fought with equal determination, driven by the knowledge that this was our final stand. Mina stayed close to me, her bravery inspiring us all. As the sun rose higher, its light began to pierce the forest canopy. The minions recoiled from the sunlight, their strength waning. Van Helsing took advantage of this, pressing the attack with renewed vigor. Now is our chance, he shouted. We must finish this. With a final surge of strength, we drove the minions back. One by one they fell, their bodies dissolving into ash as the sunlight touched them. The air was filled with the smell of decay and the sounds of their dying screams. When the last of the minions was defeated, we stood in the clearing, exhausted but victorious. The morning sun bathed the forest in a golden light, and we felt a sense of peace settle over us. It is done, Van Helsing said, his voice filled with relief. Dracula's followers are no more. We returned to our camp, our hearts lightened by our victory. We had faced incredible danger and emerged stronger. Our journey had been long and difficult, but we had triumphed over the darkness. As we made our way back to the village, we were greeted with cheers and gratitude. The villagers, who had lived in fear for so long, now looked at us with hope and admiration. We had not only defeated Dracula, but also freed them from his shadow. In the days that followed, we helped the villagers rebuild their lives. We shared our story, hoping to educate and protect them from any future threats. Van Helsing continued to study the ancient texts, ensuring that no other evils could rise in Dracula's place. Mina and I spent our days in quiet reflection, grateful for our safety and the love that had sustained us. Our bond had been tested and strengthened by our journey, and we looked forward to a future filled with light and hope. One evening, as the sun set over the mountains, Mina and I stood together, watching the sky turn shades of pink and gold. The beauty of the moment filled us with a sense of peace and fulfillment. Jonathan, we have faced so much, Mina said softly, but we have come through it together. I nodded, holding her close. Yes, Mina, 
and we will face whatever comes next with the same strength and courage. Our journey had been long and filled with challenges, but it had also brought us closer together. We had fought against the darkness and won, and now we could look to the future with hope and determination. As I write this, I am filled with a deep sense of gratitude. We have faced incredible odds and emerged victorious. Our lives have been forever changed, but we are stronger for it. We will continue to protect our world from the shadows, always ready to stand against any threat. Our story is one of triumph and courage, and it will inspire others to face their fears and stand strong. We have seen the depths of darkness, but we have also seen the power of love and determination. Together, we will continue to fight for a future filled with light and hope. The memory of Dracula's terror will always be with us, but it no longer holds power over us. We have conquered the darkness, and the light of a new day shines brightly upon us. Our journey has made us who we are, and we are ready for whatever comes next. Chapter 13. The Climactic Battle Our journey through Transylvania had brought us face to face with Dracula's minions, but we knew that the true final confrontation was yet to come. Despite our victories, we felt the shadow of Dracula lingering. Van Helsing believed that our work would only be complete once we faced Dracula in his full power. It was time for the climactic battle. We prepared for this final fight with a mix of determination and trepidation. Van Helsing, ever the leader, organized our efforts. He studied ancient texts and devised strategies to ensure our victory. Mina, Dr. Seward, and I supported him, gathering supplies and fortifying our resolve. The night before our planned attack, we gathered around the campfire, reflecting on our journey and the battles we had fought. Mina's eyes were bright with determination, her courage a beacon for us all. We have come so far, she said. We cannot fail now. We won't, Van Helsing replied. We have faced great evil and emerged stronger. Tomorrow we end this once and for all. As dawn broke, we set out for our final destination, a remote and desolate valley where Dracula had retreated to regain his strength. The valley was shrouded in mist, the air thick with an eerie silence. Our hearts pounded with a mixture of fear and anticipation. We moved cautiously, our senses heightened. The valley was filled with shadows, and the path was treacherous. We knew that Dracula would be ready for us, and we needed to be prepared for anything. At the heart of the valley, we found a hidden cave. This was Dracula's lair, the place where he had retreated to regain his power. Van Helsing signalled for us to stop, his face grave. This is it, he said. We must be ready for the fight of our lives. We entered the cave, our torches casting flickering shadows on the walls. The air was cold and damp, and the silence was oppressive. As we moved deeper into the cave, we saw Dracula standing in the center of a large chamber, his eyes glowing with an unnatural light. You dare to challenge me again? Dracula hissed, his voice echoing through the chamber. You are fools to think you can defeat me. We will not let you continue your reign of terror, Van Helsing replied, holding up his crucifix. This ends now. Dracula's eyes blazed with fury, you will regret this, he snarled. With a sudden swift movement, Dracula attacked. The chamber erupted into chaos as we fought to hold him back. Dracula's power was immense, and he moved with supernatural speed and strength. But we were prepared. Van Helsing thrust his crucifix forward, forcing Dracula to retreat. Dr. Seward and I moved in with stakes and holy water, determined to weaken him. Mina, armed with her own crucifix, stood strong, her presence a source of inspiration. 
The battle was fierce and relentless. Dracula's attacks were swift and deadly, but we fought with equal determination. The cave echoed with the sounds of our struggle, the clash of wills, and the desperation of our fight. At one point, Dracula knocked me to the ground, his eyes burning with hatred. You are weak, Jonathan, he sneered. You cannot defeat me. But I refused to give up. Summoning all my strength, I lunged at Dracula with my stake, driving it into his side. He screamed in pain, his body convulsing. Van Helsing took advantage of Dracula's moment of weakness, pressing the attack. Now, Jonathan, he shouted, finish this! With renewed determination, I rose to my feet and approached Dracula. His eyes were filled with fury and desperation, but I knew this was our chance. With a final surge of strength, I drove the stake into Dracula's heart. Dracula let out a terrible scream, his body writhing in agony. Van Helsing quickly poured holy water over him, and Dracula's body began to dissolve into ash. The air filled with a foul smell, and the chamber grew still. It is done, Van Helsing said, his voice filled with relief. Dracula is finally destroyed. We stood in the chamber, our hearts pounding. We had faced the ultimate evil and emerged victorious. The weight of our victory was immense and we felt a deep sense of relief and triumph. As we left the cave, the first light of dawn began to break through the mist. The air was fresh and clean, and we felt a sense of peace we had not known in a long time. We had faced darkness and won, and now we could look to the future with hope. Back in the village, we received a hero's welcome. The villagers, who had lived in fear for so long, now looked at us with gratitude and admiration. We had not only defeated Dracula, but also freed them from his shadow. In the days that followed, we helped the villagers rebuild their lives. We shared our story with them, hoping to educate and protect them from any future threats. Van Helsing continued to study the ancient texts, ensuring that no other evils could rise in Dracula's place. Mina and I spent our days in quiet reflection, grateful for our safety and the love that had sustained us. Our bond had been tested and strengthened by our journey, and we looked forward to a future filled with light and hope. One evening, as the sun set over the mountains, Mina and I stood together, watching the sky turn shades of pink and gold. The beauty of the moment filled us with a sense of peace and fulfillment. Jonathan, we have faced so much, Mina said softly, but we have come through it together. I nodded, holding her close. Yes, Mina, and we will face whatever comes next with the same strength and courage. Our journey had been long and filled with challenges, but it had also brought us closer together. We had fought against the darkness and won and now we could look to the future with hope and determination. As I write this, I am filled with a deep sense of gratitude. We have faced incredible odds and emerged victorious. Our lives have been forever changed, but we are stronger for it. We will continue to protect our world from the shadows, always ready to stand against any threat. Our story is one of triumph and courage, and it will inspire others to face their fears and stand strong. We have seen the depths of darkness, but we have also seen the power of love and determination. Together, we will continue to fight for a future filled with light and hope. The memory of Dracula's terror will always be with us, but it no longer holds power over us. We have conquered the darkness, and the light of a new day shines brightly upon us. Our journey has made us who we are, and we are ready for whatever comes next. Chapter 14 Victory and Loss Our victory over Dracula brought a profound sense of relief and triumph, but it was not without its costs. The battle had taken a toll on each of us, 
and as we began to recover from the ordeal, we also had to face the reality of our losses. Back in the village, we were hailed as heroes. The villagers, who had lived in fear for so long, celebrated our success. They showered us with gratitude and gifts, their faces filled with hope and relief. Yet amidst the celebrations, there was a quiet sense of sorrow. We had lost friends and allies along the way, and their absence was deeply felt. Mina and I spent our days helping the villagers rebuild their lives. We repaired homes, restored fields, and shared stories of our journey. The work was hard but fulfilling. It gave us a sense of purpose and helped to heal the wounds left by our battle. One evening, as the sun set over the mountains, Mina and I sat together on a hillside overlooking the village. The sky was a tapestry of colours, the beauty of the moment filling us with a sense of peace. Jonathan, do you ever think about those we've lost? Mina asked softly, her voice tinged with sadness. Yes, Mina, I replied, holding her hand. I think about them every day. They were brave and fought alongside us. Their sacrifices made our victory possible. Mina nodded, her eyes glistening with tears. I miss them, she said, but I know they would want us to live and find happiness. We will, Mina, I promised. We will honour their memory by living our lives to the fullest. Van Helsing, too, felt the weight of our losses. Though he was a man of great strength and wisdom, the battles had left their mark on him. He spent hours poring over ancient texts, ensuring that no remnants of Dracula's influence remained. He was determined to prevent any future threats. One day, as we were working in the village, Van Helsing approached me. His face was lined with fatigue, but his eyes were filled with determination. Jonathan, we must ensure that Dracula's evil is completely eradicated, he said. There are still places we need to check, remnants that must be destroyed. I nodded, understanding the importance of his mission. I will help you, Van Helsing. We cannot leave any stone unturned. Together, we visited the last of Dracula's known hiding places. We destroyed any remaining artifacts and sealed the entrances to his lairs. Each act of destruction felt like a step closer to true peace. The villagers watched us with respect and gratitude, their trust in us unwavering. As we continued our work, I found myself reflecting on the journey we had taken. We had faced incredible dangers and emerged victorious. Yet the cost of our victory was always in my thoughts. The friends we had lost, the battles we had fought, all weighed heavily on my heart. One evening, Van Helsing called us together. He stood before us, his expression serious but hopeful. My friends, he began, we have achieved a great victory, but we must remain vigilant. The world is full of unknown dangers, and we must be prepared to face them. We have the strength and the knowledge to protect those we love. We all nodded, understanding the gravity of his words. We had been through so much, and we knew that our fight against darkness might not be over. But we were ready. We had proven our strength and our unity. Mina, ever the source of strength and courage, stood beside me. Her presence was a constant reminder of why we fought. We fought for love, for peace, and for the future. As the days turned into weeks, we continued our work in the village. We rebuilt homes, planted crops, and helped the villagers reclaim their lives. The sense of community and purpose gave us all a sense of healing. One morning, as we were working in the fields, a young boy approached me. He looked up at me with wide, curious eyes. Mr. Harker, 
Is it true that you fought a real vampire? He asked. I smiled, kneeling down to his level. Yes, it's true, I said. But it wasn't just me. We all fought together, and that's why we won. The boy's eyes lit up with admiration. I want to be brave like you, he said. You already are, I replied, ruffling his hair. Bravery is about doing what's right, even when it's hard. As I watched the boy run off to join his friends, I felt a deep sense of hope for the future. Our victory had given us the strength to rebuild, to move forward, and to protect those we loved. Mina and I often talked about the future. We dreamed of a life filled with love and peace, free from the shadows of the past. Our journey had changed us, but it had also brought us closer together. We knew that whatever challenges lay ahead, we would face them together. One evening, as we sat by the fire, Mina took my hand. Jonathan, we have been through so much, but I know that as long as we are together, we can face anything. I feel the same way, Mina, I said, looking into her eyes. Our love and our strength have seen us through the darkest times, and they will continue to guide us. As I write this, I am filled with a deep sense of gratitude. Our journey has been one of incredible challenges and profound loss, but it has also been a journey of strength, love and victory. We have faced the darkness and emerged stronger, ready to face whatever the future holds. We will honour the memory of those we have lost by living our lives with purpose and courage. We will protect our world from the shadows and ensure that the light of hope continues to shine brightly. Our story is one of triumph and resilience, a testament to the power of love and determination. We have seen the depths of darkness, but we have also seen the strength of the human spirit. Together, we will continue to fight for a future filled with light and hope. As we move forward, we will carry the lessons we have learned and the strength we have gained. We will protect our loved ones and our world from any threat that may arise. Together, we will continue to fight for a future filled with light and hope. Chapter 15. Return to Normalcy After the climactic battle and our victory over Dracula, our lives slowly began to return to normal. The journey had been long and arduous, filled with danger and loss, but it had also brought us closer together and made us stronger. As we settled back into our daily routines, we found solace in the simple joys of life and the love that sustained us. Mina and I decided to stay in the village for a few more weeks. We wanted to ensure that everything was truly settled and that the villagers were safe. The village, once shrouded in fear, was now filled with hope and gratitude. The people had embraced us as their own, and we felt a deep connection to this place that had witnessed our greatest struggles and triumphs. Each day, we worked side by side with the villagers, rebuilding homes and planting crops. The fields that had once been barren and neglected now flourished with new life. The children, who had lived in fear, now played freely in the sunshine. Their laughter was a testament to the peace we had fought so hard to achieve. One morning, as we were working in the garden, Mina turned to me with a smile. Jonathan, look at how far we've come, she said. This village is alive again, and so are we. I nodded, feeling a deep sense of contentment. Yes, Mina, we have faced great darkness, but we have also found light and hope. Our journey has made us stronger, and now we can truly begin to live. Van Helsing, ever the scholar and protector, continued his work in the village. He taught the people how to protect themselves from any future threats 
and shared his vast knowledge of folklore and history. His presence was a source of comfort and wisdom for us all. One evening, as we gathered around the fire, Van Helsing spoke of his plans to return to his homeland. I have much work to do, he said, but I will always be grateful for the time I have spent here and the friends I have made. We will miss you, Van Helsing, I said. Your guidance and strength have been invaluable. Van Helsing smiled, his eyes twinkling with warmth. And I will miss you all. But I know that you will continue to protect each other and this village. Our bond will remain, no matter the distance. Dr. Seward, too, decided to return to his work in England. He had been a steadfast ally and friend, and his dedication to our cause had been unwavering. It is time for me to go back, he said but I will carry the memories of our journey with me always. As our friends prepared to leave, Mina and I made our own plans to return to England. We had found peace and healing in the village, but we were ready to continue our lives and build a future together. The journey back to England was a time of reflection and quiet joy. We travelled through the countryside, marvelling at the beauty of the landscape and the simplicity of everyday life. Each moment was a reminder of the preciousness of peace and the strength of our love. When we arrived home, we were greeted with warmth and celebration. Our friends and family had been worried about us, but they were overjoyed to see us safe and well. We shared our story, ensuring that the memory of our journey and the lessons we had learned would not be forgotten. Mina and I settled into our new life, with a sense of purpose and gratitude. We took joy in the simple things, sharing meals, walking in the garden, and spending time with loved ones. Each day was a gift, and we cherished every moment. One afternoon, as we sat together on a bench in our garden, Mina took my hand. Jonathan, our journey was filled with danger and loss, but it was also filled with love and triumph. We have been through so much, but we have come out stronger. I looked into her eyes, feeling a deep sense of love and admiration. Yes, Mina, we have faced the darkest of times, but we have also found the light. Our love has seen us through, and it will continue to guide us. As we moved forward, we carried the memories of our journey with us. We honoured the friends we had lost, and celebrated the victories we had achieved. Our experiences had shaped us, but they had also given us a deeper appreciation for the beauty of life and the power of love. Van Helsing and Dr. Seward remained in touch, their letters filled with news and updates. They, too, had found new purpose and continued to protect and educate others. Our bond, forged in the fires of battle, remained strong and unbroken. As I write this, I am filled with a profound sense of peace and fulfilment. Our journey has been one of incredible challenges and triumphs, and it has made us who we are. We have faced the darkness and emerged stronger, ready to embrace the future with hope and determination. Our story is one of love, courage, and resilience. We have seen the depths of fear, and the heights of victory. We have fought for a future filled with light and hope, and we have found it. Together, we will continue to protect our loved ones and our world from any threat that may arise. We will face each day with gratitude and strength, knowing that we have the power to overcome any obstacle. The memory of Dracula's terror will always be with us, but it no longer holds power over us. We have conquered the darkness, and the light of a new day shines brightly upon us. Our journey has made us who we are, and we are ready for whatever comes next. As we move forward, we will carry the lessons we have learned and the strength we have gained. We will honour the memory of those we have lost and celebrate the victories we have achieved. Together, 
We will continue to fight for a future filled with light and hope.